June 15th, 2017, Gaylord, Michigan. Dear Lilith, I recently found your channel and I'm a longtime listener of other Dogman Encounter channels like Vic Cundiff's channel and What Lurks Beneath. I never shared my story before, but I'd like you to read it. I'm a realtor in Gaylord, Michigan. It's a great place to live. The city has beautiful views of the Great Lakes and Lake Charlevoix. It's also close to both Traverse City and Petoskey. If you're looking for some outdoor adventure, a hike through the Gaylord State Forest is a great way to spend a day, and that's exactly what I was planning to do after work on this particular day. I had just got done showing a few houses to clients who lived in southern Michigan. They were looking for a great place to raise their kids, and the husband recently got a job in Gaylord. They loved the town, and I could see that they would be happy living here. After we looked at the fourth house, we called it a day. I was going to meet my husband at Gaylord State Forest, and we were going to do a late afternoon hike. It took me about 15 minutes to get there, and my husband Rick was already waiting for me in the parking lot. We walked our normal loop through the park, starting off on one of our favorite trails. As I look back on it, I remember that something didn't seem right that day. But at the time, I just pushed the thoughts out of my head since Rick and I were deep in conversation. We walked for about 45 minutes and talked about all sorts of topics like how his work was going with his new promotion and what we might do for my birthday. At one point, we stopped and looked at each other as a shrill noise cut through the air. The noise was unlike anything either of us had ever heard before. We stood there listening for a few minutes, but when it didn't happen again, we continued on. We eventually ended up close to Lake Charlevoix and stopped at a few picnic benches to have a bite to eat. I had an apple and Rick brought along his usual trail mix. We made sure to throw it all away since we were heading back into the woods and didn't want to attract any animals. We continued our walk and this time headed to the ridge trail which took us through some pine trees before reaching a lookout point where we could see more of Lake Charlevoix below. Everything was still and quiet. Looking back, there were no forest sounds at all at this point, which now, knowing what I know, makes sense. From there, we stopped at the falls for a few minutes, making sure we didn't stay too long since it was getting close to sunset, and we didn't want to get lost in this area of the park. We started back towards the car, talking about how the next time we should bring some fishing gear. There's a stream where people catch a lot of trout, and right then, we heard the shrill scream again. But just like before, it didn't happen a second time. Even still, we picked up our pace a bit and continued to head back the way we had come. We crossed a bridge over Meadow Brook Creek, and it was now dusk. And Rick pointed out what he thought might be an eagle's nest high in the trees. Luckily, I had my zoom lens, and sure enough, it was an eagle's nest. Rick spotted one of the eagles perched up on the tree, looking down at us. Rick's an avid bird watcher. I never really got into it, but I do find it interesting. He was looking around and pointed out chickadees. That one right there is the black-capped chickadee. Anyway... Right as he was telling me, my head was still feeling creeped out by the screams that we had heard, and I told him that I just wanted to keep moving along back towards the car. As we headed back, we began to smell something foul coming from the path ahead. He told me it was probably just a skunk, but this didn't smell like a skunk. It was a really foul odor. I was thinking maybe a fox or deer or coyote carcass. We made a left turn at the fork in the path and spotted the tree in the woods covered in bird poop. That was our landmarker that we were close and on the final path that would take us back to our cars. And this is when I really noticed that something wasn't right. 
I felt a change in the air, and all of the birds stopped chirping, and all of the movement in the forest stopped, and it got quiet. Rick noticed it, too. I thought of all the movies where something bad happens to campers or hikers, and this was all just too weird for me not to be worried. We literally started jogging at this point and reached a clearing in the woods when we heard sounds. They were so loud and obvious with all the other silence in the woods. They sounded like branches snapping off from trees as if they were being pushed over by something coming closer to us. And that's when I saw it. We both saw it. The creature was eight or nine feet tall and had mangy fur all over its body. It had a head of a German shepherd or maybe a wolf, but the body of a man. Its eyes glowed yellow and it was snarling at us with fangs like something out of a horror movie. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. I couldn't understand what I was seeing. Rick grabbed me and pulled me behind a tree, but it was too late. The creature had seen us and began coming at us, running as fast as a horse would gallop. Luckily, Rick always carries his pistol on him, and he fired at the ground in front of the creature. This startled it, which made it rear its head up, and it let out a shrill scream. The exact scream that we had already heard twice. I was completely frozen in my tracks. I was sure we were about to be attacked. But before I could say or do anything, the creature turned off the path and fled into the woods. Rick and I were speechless. All we could do was look at each other until he was finally able to yell, RUN! And we bolted to our cars. We both later agreed that we feel we'd been lucky to escape with our lives. I was never a believer of monsters before, but this changed me. That experience happened four years ago, and it still haunts me to this day. Rick and I still go hiking, but we haven't been back to Gaylord State Forest since that incident. He always brings his pistol, and we never go hiking close to dusk or dawn. I've read folklore about the Michigan Dogman, and I thought it was all make-believe. But when I saw that creature, that thing, with my own eyes, and experienced it running towards us, I knew then that there really are monsters in this world. I just thought I would report this as a potential dogman hearing, not a sighting. Multiple co-workers of mine in Shelby County, Tennessee Medical Facility have heard a strange creature screaming and making crystal clear sounds behind the facility. It's well lit, fenced, but there are woods behind and also a river bottom near. Three separate people have heard the noise two together, one at an earlier time last summer. This most recent event happened within the last month. When discussing it, the third person confidently says that they also heard the noise in the pre-dawn hours while getting something from their vehicle, and they couldn't believe it. So they had never mentioned it to anyone. After hearing the details of what the other two heard, the third person confided. All three are medical professionals, have outdoor experience, and cannot identify the creature making the sounds. They described it as being loud, crystal clear, and even though it was from an obvious distance, the call was loud enough to be heard clearly from within a running car with the defroster blowing. This occurred at twilight roughly 6 to 7 a.m. Also, since this occurred near shift change, several ladies were coming into work, who obviously heard the noise too, and rushed inside the building. This was observed by the two who were leaving the building. What do you think they all heard? Laugh at me. I really don't care. I don't know what I saw, 
but it looked like a cross between a guy and a wolf. I shit you not. I was on my way home from work. It was maybe ten minutes away from the house, coming up a big hill. I suddenly got the strangest feeling, so I slowed down, thinking a deer was going to come out of the woods or something. I just felt like I was being watched or followed. There were no cars in front of me or behind me. I got to the top of the hill and slammed on my brakes. Because as soon as I got to the top of the hill, this huge, black, hairy thing came bounding across the road. It was so big that when it ran, its back arched up like kind of like a cheetah, but only a lot more than that. I know that if it would have stood up, it would have been well over six feet tall, maybe even taller. I also knew another car saw it too, because when I hit the brakes, another car turned onto that road and slammed into their brakes too. We both just sat there for a few minutes, which really wasn't safe considering it. I know, but we were in shock. I truly have no idea what it was that I saw. It was not a dog or a horse. Dogs don't get that big or arch their backs like this thing did when it was running. The arms and legs, whatever it had, were so long it was having to throw them out to the side. Think kind of like a crab walk, but a run. And the appendages it had were just as big as it was. It ran from one side of the woods to the other non-stop, like it was either going after something or running away from something. I honestly have no idea what the holy freaking hell it was that I saw. And I don't care if you laugh at me. I know what I saw. I can't fathom telling a story about a dog man without telling a story about dogs. I had an aging male husky named Grimy. He had that heterochromia, you know, the two different colored eyes. He called the forest on my property in Vermont his own little doggy empire. News reached me that there had been a rash of wild coyotes that didn't have any qualms with picking up domestic dogs for food. So I was afraid to let Grim wander too far. Against my basic principles as a dog owner, I chained him up so he wouldn't wander off into the woods like he was used to. He didn't like that none too much at all. One evening, I went out to check on Old Grim, and I thought I could hear the wail of coyotes. Actually, that's exactly what I heard, and the sound was coming from where I had kept him chained up. I cursed myself for not thinking about this as a possible outcome, so I rushed to my dog's rescue with a heavy shovel in my hand. I feared that I was too late and that that would be the shovel I would use to bury my dog instead of rescuing him. Sure enough, I came over him just in time to see a bunch of the wild tramps run off when they saw me coming and making noise. I thought for sure that I'd see Grim crumpled up and torn open, but I didn't see him at all. The chain looked like it had been snapped, but that could only be possible if it had been done with cutters. What thing on this earth could possibly snap an iron chain like that? I heard Grim whimpering. The sound interrupted my thoughts. I couldn't tell which direction it was coming from, though, so I spun around to see my dog in the clutches of a creature I can only describe as a monster from the stinking pits of hell itself. It looked exactly like a man crossbred with a mean dog. The head was ferociously wolfish. Everything else had a very brutish human aspect to it. The arms like tree trunks that held on to my dog very firmly. Grim looked at me. I couldn't read him. I was too worked up to tell how much terror he was seized by. He wasn't exactly relaxed, but he wasn't panicking either, and this threw me. He tried to wiggle free at the sight of me, and just like that, the monster let him go and looked at me and bared its fangs. But other than that, it didn't do anything. This 
thing then slowly walked backwards into the woods with its eyes slowly and heavily trained on me as if making sure I wouldn't move a muscle. When it was clear that I wasn't going to chase it off, it ran off. Before submitting this story, I did do a bit of preliminary research seeing what kind of experiences people have had with humanoid dogs. I'm guessing this would be in the dogman category, correct? Assuming all these stories are true, it looks like it's not uncommon to have near misses with these creatures. But it looks like in this instance, the thing let me go, and my dog too. It even seemed to perceive that my dog had a relationship with me. I have no idea what kind of instinct this understanding was working in. I guess I should consider myself lucky. And my dog, even luckier. <laughs>